Well, it's a really fun night. I mean, this is the Hall of Fame and Sport Awards. We're going to be inducting Hall of Fame people coming all the way back from the early 90s teams, from the Cherry Fox basketball team to coaches who've been in, been in business here since 40 plus years of coaching and volunteers, teams. It's a great evening for everybody to come together and celebrate, especially after two years of not being together. This whole sports community gets together to celebrate. What a time this is going to be. We're really looking forward to a great show this evening. And of course, this is getting bigger and bigger. So it's like uh, you've got over 500 people tonight. So how, how is it? Uh, developing over the years. This event at the awards here, at the Sport Awards and Hall of Fame, I mean, it keeps growing and growing, which is phenomenal. Um, we just love the fact that everybody likes to come out and celebrate together and be as one great community. And that's what makes us, I think, one of the best sporting communities in the province. And then just tell us a little bit about the categories and why you think they're so important. Well, the categories, we have Hall of Fame, which is huge to recognize success because it motivates the future generations. But then you have outstanding team, outstanding coach, outstanding official, outstanding athletes. But then also we have Courage Awards. People have come back from major setbacks. Those are really good, as well as recognizing community leaders that have volunteered their time for decades to make sport happen. So we're just seeing every sort of area of the sport community all together, which is a wonderful time. And last thing, just tell us a bit about the Sports Alliance and how people can help out. Well, we gather everyone together to make sure that we're one of the best sporting communities in the province. And that's what we are. We built, you know, from facilities to community pride, to strong teams, to strong relationships with staff. Uh, Mayor and City Council as well as School District, we know that we have one of the best sporting communities in the province and we're part of the glue that makes that all happen. And how do we help you? Uh, just keep showing up and keep uh, supporting us in terms of coming to the awards and supporting your local sport clubs. Thanks Ryan. Thank you. All right, I want to welcome everyone to the POCO Sport Awards presented by the POCO Sport Alliance of the City of Port Coquitlam. Super excited to have a ton of people here tonight, a lot of great athletes, a lot of great volunteers, a lot of great coaches, all giving back for the love of sport, and we're super excited about it. I'm Steve Darling. I'm the sports designate for the City of Port Coquitlam, and happy to have you here. Why it's so important? Hey, this is uh, uh, this is the fourth annual uh, Poco Sports Awards, and this is just a great night to celebrate sports in Porco Coquitlam. Um, you know, it's a it's a fruition. You know, the last couple of years of being through the pandemic, and the night to celebrate our athletes, our local athletes, and the uh, and the community, and what sport brings to this community. And um, it's just a great night to get together and celebrate sport. Yeah, a lot of the good things happening in Poco with the uh, newer facilities. Can you tell us a, bit, a little bit about that? Yeah, that's great. You know, Council and their vision, you know, to build a, a hub of sport in this community. You know, the addition of our new uh, rec recreation complex, the community center in the downtown core. You know, the recent announcement of the sports facility, of the uh, soccer facility at Gates Park, just uh, is a testament to uh, Council's commitment to be a great sport town and, and the best sports town in British Columbia. Emily Sussex and I play on the Terry Fox Senior Girls basketball team. Yeah. And then you, I heard you're up for an award or possible award for your team, is that right? Our team is. I believe it's most outstanding team, something like that, because we won provincials. Just provincials. Provincials two out of our three years. Yeah. And uh, why is it so important to have a night like tonight? Is that, you in grade 12? So it's, so it's a big special thing, I guess, all together. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, this is kind of like our last big event as a team. Everyone's going to be going their separate ways after this to university. Everyone's kind of splitting up, so it's nice to have this one last thing, one last bit of recognition, I guess. Yeah. And what would you say, like the grade nines were coming up, and some someone uh, is a little nervous about playing volleyball, basketball, or getting involved in sports? Have fun with it, honestly. High school is goes by so quickly, and getting involved with sports makes it so much fun and just. I really enjoyed it, and I think everyone else should really participate in it. And yeah, uh, my name is Cole McLean, and I think I'm here to get some sort of award. But you play hockey. Yeah, yeah, I play Hot hockey. Team. Uh, Pogo Pirates A1. And who are the guys behind you? Uh, those are my teammates. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> so how was this year in, in uh, playing hockey in Pogo after COVID? Well, uh, we kind of started out pretty rough tryouts were weird and everything and then it got better eventually and we eventually made it for, to provincials yeah and how did you do in the provincials um 
pretty good. Uh, we got third place. We could have played better, but I'm happy with the result. Yeah. But I guess it's a big year for the Pirates because you're playing above. You basically went further than you ever went before, right? As yeah. a team. Yeah. So tell us what was that was like to kind of be the first to go that far. Um, I haven't seen the community like that together in a while, and it was it was really it was a cool thing to see going to provincials. Just a great experience. Anything you want to say about your coaching team or playing hockey in Poco? Uh, I just love it. This might have been my last year, but it was a it was a great one. So I'm very huh? grateful. Go Pirates! So my name is Anna Ostea. I play volleyball and I go to Riverside Secondary. And what's so special about this year? Uh, what's special about this year is that it was our first year back from COVID. So getting back into our regular schedule of playing volleyball was super nice. So there's a, it's a very special year for the volleyball team though, right? You did something pretty crazy this year. Uh, this year we did do something crazy. We won our third provincial championship again. Yes. So it was, uh, it was a wonderful way to end off the season. Yeah. And so for uh, say, and what grade are you in? I'm in grade 12. So, so it's your last year. It must be a special, special night altogether. What does that feel like? Yeah, it was definitely a special year. It's very emotional, you know, never getting to play in a high school team again. So the stakes are high for sure. Yeah. And then who are these uh, ladies behind us? These lovely ladies are my beautiful teammates. Say hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. So uh, what would you say to a young player young lady coming into uh, the school and, and grade nine and, and a little nervous about playing sports. Uh, one thing I'd say to a young lady would be uh, be confident. Um, my name is Nona and I play for Poco Ringette. Uh, my name is Rihanna and I play for Poco Ringette Association and we're here for the Outstanding Team Award. Okay, so uh, what is so special besides the award? Why, do you, what is so sp why is it so much fun to come here? You know, it's our it's personally my first time being here, and I think what makes it so special is just seeing everyone from multiple different sports getting together and celebrating their love for sports. And what is, you know, I see Ringette, you know, and I've, I've kind of walked in the ring sometimes. It looks very, like it's not like the old Ringette. The, the, no. the, the ladies are kind of moving around, and it's kind of a little, little rough out there. Yeah, it's definitely a little rough. It's changed a lot throughout the years, so, but it's fun. It's good. I like it. So why did you pick ringette? I didn't want to play hockey. <laughs> so uh, is, at what grade are you in? Uh, 12. 12. So this is your last year. Um, I'm going to play keep playing, just not on as much competitive teams anymore and everything. So, so yeah. What would you want to say to folks out there who are thinking about taking up ringette? Oh my, do it. I started when I was seven and I am now in university and I'm still going competitively. Like you can, have fun with it. It's such a good sport. And it's such a community when you really get into it. And who are these ladies behind us? Um, the rest of our ringette team. And what do you, what do you, would, would you say about your coaches? I love our coaches. I've had the same coach for five years and he's the best. I couldn't ask for a better coach. My name's Councillor Nancy McCurra from the city of Port Coquitlam. It is a wonderful evening. We're bringing about 500 people together tonight for the Poco Sports Alliance Awards. Why is it so much fun to have so many people out uh, after COVID? Well, it's certainly bringing the community together. And I see an awful lot of smiling faces and happy people. And seeing this just warms my heart. And I'm sure everyone else that's attending as well. People have come from uh, all over, I understand. There's even guests here from the United States that are here to celebrate with their family. And a big part, I guess, the, the new rec center has the new Hall of Fame in the rec center. And uh, tell us a little bit about the new rec center and the new Hall of Fame. So the new rec center will be working on the Hall of Fame. Uh, part of it's going to be digital. So there's still some more work that's, that has to take place because as things are new, it has to go through certain protocol. But when it's done, all these people probably will be there somewhere, I'm sure. Thank you very much and, and have a good night. Thank you. Hi, my name is Glenn Pollock. I'm a city councillor for Quillam. I'm happy to be here at the Sport Awards. This has become such a go-to event in the Tri-Cities. It's fabulous. It, uh, we are just talking there about how more from the uh, Amateur Athletic Association and the Sport Alliance. And now this award show, it's, it's such a fantastic event because it's so well produced and uh, Poco is so passionate about sport and this is just a, it's a, a way for people to come and be recognized and express that passion. I just love it. Well, one of your favorite sports is lacrosse. 
So how is the new rec center and uh, the Hall of Fame so important to lacrosse in Poco? Well, it's absolutely, we've got a, we've got a great heritage of lacrosse in the city. And uh, to the fact that we can recognize our athletes uh, in the Hall of Fame is amazing. But yeah, we're, I'm really glad with the way the rec center's turned out. We had a, it was a, not a heated discussion, but a lengthy discussion about adding that third playing surface. And I'm glad we did because we could fill it up. We could have filled up four or five. So it's been phenomenal. I think the building's been a great success. I hope everybody feels that way. And tell us about the, how that third rink keeps some of the ice longer, or keeps the lacrosse in a little earlier. Like how does that third rink really help Poco? Yeah, it's, uh, well, that's been a bit of a bone of contention. Uh, we're keeping ice in one for most of the year. It's just coming out for some maintenance in July and August. But just, uh, you know, the lacrosse has been pressuring us to do a covered lacrosse box. And we thought the third floor would negate that for a few years. You know, we, it's like having a covered lacrosse box put inside, moving from two floors to three. So it's been a it's been a boon. And like I said, we with all the sports, the regional sports like ringette and figure skating and speed skating, we could fill, we could have built Honestly, Pat, we could have built five or six and we could fill them up. It's, there's such a demand. So, so anything you want to add that I haven't asked you? No, just thanks for being here. It's, and it's a, a great event. I, I was telling uh, somebody earlier that everybody who comes enjoys it and then they, they want to come next year because it's such a fantastic event and it's so well produced. Yeah, and I guess there's a lot of there's a lot of seniors here, grade 12. So this is kind of like a, a pre-prom or a double prom. Yeah, may, maybe if that's some of the some of the senior teams being recognized. It's quite funny because when they're introduced, they cheer for one another and to see who gets the loudest cheer. So, and you know what? There's another scene, other seniors here, senior adults like us, like they're recognizing one of my old friends, Bob Bucket tonight for everything he's done in the city. And I, I'm just so nice that people like him get recognized in a fashion that they should for the, for the years of, of volunteering they've done in the city. So it's awesome. Councilor Pollock, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for this being is here. This is Patrick McCarthy with Tri-Cities Community Television. Uh, we're in the green room at the Port Coquitlam Sports and Awards Night here in downtown Port Coquitlam. And uh, in a few minutes, a few of the inductees and, uh, and nominees will be kind of announced on the stage. And then the best part is they get to come down here after they win. And we have a chance to kind of chat with them and, and sort of learn a little bit more about them as athletes or, or coaches or, or even officials. Let's start the 2022 Port Coquitlam Hall of Fame and Sports Awards show with our first category tonight, and that is the Outstanding Official of the Year. All great outstanding recipients doing what they can to give back to the community. This year's recipient of the award is Tina Conley. Tina, congratulations. I guess you're, you've won in the category of Outstanding Official Award. And for me as a player, it's always great to sort of see officials get some nomination. How does it feel for yourself? It feels good. <laughs> lots and lots of hours have been put in over the years. So 12 years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the Poco Marlins and, and sort of how you got involved with that. Uh, Poco Marlins, the summer swim club. Um, they can be, compete, kids compete from uh, May until um, the end of August. Um, my kids have been involved since uh, they were eight and five. So uh, 2010, I think, is when we started, 2010, 2011. So um, it's been about 12 years. Um, I started out officiating, um, basically just doing like minor roles, and then it kind of morphed into the more senior roles over the years, and now I'm refing meets and things. Yeah, and so for us, you know, with the, in Poco, we've got a new kind of, I guess, a new lap pool where there's some things happening around, uh, I guess, the, the swimming is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, if you go back to every time in the summer you go by the Centennial Pool, you've got a lot of people camped outside. So what does that, what does that, the swimming community mean to you and, and, and the city? Well, summer swimming is a pretty tight-knit community. Um, everybody is all all hands on deck. Um, a lot of parent volunteers. The meets couldn't run without parent volunteers. So um, we're all, you know, the kids are swimming and the parents are all working on deck. And uh, it's like camping every weekend with your best friends. So, I mean, you, the, these these families become your community. And uh, 
So every single weekend we haul our tents out there and that's, that's the tents you see. So from six in the morning until 6 p.m. at night, Saturday and Sunday, we're at, a, we're at a swim meet somewhere, camping and, you know, cooking food for our kids and volunteering on deck and it's a great time. So what is it, what is so rewarding about, you know, going from a, a, a parent bringing their kids to the meet and then also becoming, you know, in some cases people become coaches, but in your case you became an official. What is that, what, what drove you to do that? Um, I was going to be there all day anyway, and so I might as well be helping. And, um, you know, as parents, kids age out, the more senior parents age also age out, and the more senior parents are usually in the more senior officiating roles. So it just kind of, it's a natural progression that anybody that's working on deck will move into the next, you know, more senior role. And so that's kind of a just been the progression for me as I started in the junior roles and now I'm in the senior role as my kids are older and aging out. So so what would you, if you looked at your 12 years of coaching, is there any moment that you, officiating, officiating sorry I wasn't coaching, you know, too many coaches, <laughs> but of your 12 years of officiating, is there one or two moments that you kind of remember as sort of like this is fun or this is why I do it? Um, you know what, the part that's just fun is just being with everybody and um, like I said you're with these people all summer long and they do and they're all like-minded people they're all there for their kids they're all good wholesome family oriented people and they just become your friends and uh, we have lots of fun on deck when we're officiating I mean the roles are serious and um, we take them seriously but it, there's lots of time for you know silly banter and you know inappropriate jokes maybe and it's just a lot of fun and what last thing what would you say to folks out there about uh, who may not you know, are nervous about being an official or getting involved, what would you suggest to them? Um, you just have to um, shadow the um, senior officials. And if you're interested in learning, there's always clinics and um, the, the senior folks are always ready to help and guide you along the way. Tina, congratulations again. And uh, all the best. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, as much as we are here celebrating all the time that's put in volunteers, coaches, and athletes, in a city this size, too, there's always someone who's overcome and challenged with some adversity. Uh, and we celebrate those athletes with the Courage Award. Such is the story in the summer of Justin Hill. Let's go, Justin! Unbridled energy. That is Justin Hill. Yeah! Super active, never stops moving, never stops talking, never stops making noise. Super funny kid, always singing, dancing, the ultimate entertainer. My sister always annoyed with me, always annoying my sister. Always in hockey, always just skating around, usually listening to coaches. Slowly, that energetic boy started to fade away. He didn't want to stay afterwards and like play. Now all the kids are just you know having fun. They're throwing wiffle balls to each other and they're you know hitting balls, running around the bases and acting silly. And he he didn't want to do it. I couldn't skate through a whole practice without like having to sit on the bench for a little bit. He never complained. Like so, that was the the thing. I just I I didn't know. I knew there had to be something like nothing like this just happens out of the blue. There had to be something, but I just had no idea what it could be. Well, I think as a mom, I was concerned. I knew something wasn't right. So I called the doctor again and said, we need to do something. Something is wrong with my child. Finally, test results started to come. Justin was off to Children's Hospital, where he was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So I was relieved and I was also scared. Faced with three choices, Justin went with a liquid diet, no food the entire summer bring it on. I didn't anything to get this to stop. I was just, I was done with it. Too much pain. The weight loss was really hard. Like he was really thin. He, we have pictures of him in his baseball uniform and the uniform is just hanging off of him. Having to sit there just drinking my shakes and watching other people eat foods that I love, like could be my favorite food, could even be foods that I've always hated all my life. I would still be, oh, I want that so bad. <laughs> yeah. It was shocking for all of us that he did it and never once slipped up, never once had a treat, never once had a bite of food. His discipline brought the desired results back to himself and playing sports. Unbelievable. Like it was, 
overnight it was it was back to himself again like goofy energetic you know like just full of life it was it was so good i think i kind of realized how much like mental strength it would take and it was a struggle but i was able to do it he had a meeting with his teacher a couple months ago and his teacher was you know talking about how he has to send justin out of the room just to go burn some energy off sometimes and and we laughed and said you know like we're sorry he's being disruptive in class, but you know, thank goodness he's just being a typical grade seven boy. I was still trying to like, oh, I've always loved these sports. Why am I, why am I like not wanting to, you know, do this as much as I usually do? But then once I started to be able to do it like fluently, like just go through each practice every day, I was feeling, yeah, this is why I love those sports. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Justin Hill. So Justin, could you just tell us what you've won and uh, what that means to you? Um, well, the Courage Award, it's great. It's good to know that I'm a uh, Good to know that I'm uh, like not sick. Obviously, I'm looking better, playing better. People see that, and it's great. Yeah. So you play hockey. So tell us a little bit about uh, you know what you want to share about about that the, the sort of uh, the journey for the last few years for yourself. Well, I would think I was playing like pretty good level for a while, but then when that one year, obviously, I got sick and I wasn't playing where I wanted to be. I thought, um, like. I was really disappointed in myself, and then this year I felt I was getting better. So next year I think I'm going to be back at the level that I am, and that means a lot to me. So, so what would you say? I mean, outside of the inspiration, what would you say to young, young, young folks out there who are not feeling great? You know, is there is there something you would give them as, for advice? Uh, just work through, and you'll get back or better than you were before. That's what I told myself. <laughs> and so, what do you? And uh, what was the best? What was the highlight for hockey this year? Um. <laughs> Probably um, winning playoffs in the end of the season. Yeah. Probably it. So at least we got a, a winning team in our area. So I guess we should we should all come watch you guys play more often than than the Canucks, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, you guys went over forty games. You, you you scored a bunch of points. So tell us a little bit about the season. Um, I think that me and my buddy Luke we um, got a lot of points. We were very happy about ourselves, but it was a great season for us. We. We were both, uh, I was an assistant, and I think I did pretty well. It made me feel pretty good about myself. Uh, always getting compliments from parents and coaches made me feel really good about myself. The season was great for me. So, so what is it like playing uh, hockey in Poco? Uh, it's great. I love Poco. Small town, but we are so good. <laughs> but yeah, I love playing in Poco. And then the other one is, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about your coaches and your parents? Anything you want to add about that? Um, I love my coaches. They were so good. They were part of the reason that helped me get through it and why I feel so much better about my hockey performance and my parents as well. Same thing for them. So how does, so, so when you're in there in the audience today and they, and they kind of called your name, what, what did you feel? Uh, I felt a bit nervous and excited to walk up upstage. I knew that he was going to ask me some questions, but yeah, it felt good to be noticed for something. Well, uh, a, congratulations on getting better or feeling better. Um, is there anything you want to say to folks out there or your or your teammates? Um, just, uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Always pass me the puck. <laughs> Always pass me the puck. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, What's your number on your shirt? Uh, number seven. Why number seven? My lucky number and my birth month. Number seven. Right. Yeah. And it's hard to get that number, isn't it? It's hard to get a seven. Yeah, I had to I had to struggle with a few people to get it, but I got it. It's probably because they wanted you to feel good. So it's always great when your teammates uh, give you give you what you want for when you're not feeling so great, I assume. Yeah, definitely. Well, all all the best on the uh, on the on the award. Hope you're feeling better. And um, I guess you're playing next season, correct? Yes. Thanks, Justin. Time to celebrate a community leader.
Darcy Jago, president of Poco Minor Baseball since 12, 2014 for seven years, served on the board of Poco Minor Baseball for over a decade, helped the successful merger of PC Minor Baseball with Coquillum to create the new Tri-City Thunder Baseball to ensure long-term stability and competitive abilities at the provincial level. Where are you, Darcy? Make your way up here. So Darcy, can you tell us uh, why you're here and what you've won? I'm here because I was nominated and uh, I guess voted to receive an Outstanding Community Leader Award, which I appreciate. I've actually turned it down a few times and finally I let them, <laughs> I let them go ahead with it this year. Yeah, and it's for, it's for baseball, right? It is, yeah. So what's, what does is, what is playing, I guess, uh, baseball mean to you in Port Quitlam? And I played baseball growing up, and I wanted to make sure that my kids had the absolute best experience in baseball growing up. So how is, did you play uh, baseball in Poco, or did you just... No, uh... I'm from Edmonton. I play, I'm from Alberta, and I played, uh, man, I think I started when I was 12, and I played all the way through. Even when there was no minor leagues, I was looking for a team to play on through work or, or you know, other, other social means. Yes. So, I mean, I find that I play soccer. So, like, it seems like you start playing young and you play older and, and you just keep going. So, and is that, is that kind of what you see sport does for the community? Yes. It, it's, if the kids love the sport, you know, we, we got to have, make sure they have outlets to go play in, whether it be community, community baseball to start with, and then uh, um, other organizations like beer leagues or, you know, or, or community, or uh, not community, co-ed baseball where they can play, but they can still continue to play you know, if they can't be professionals, they can still play because of their love of the game. I never played baseball, but when I played soccer, there's that little caged alley between the two baseball fields. <laughs> so obviously baseball players don't like soccer players because I felt like we were running for our lives. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. It's, uh, yeah, those are those, some of those boys over there. They can really nail them out of that park. And, and th I feel for the soccer kids. And it's funny. It, a lot of these kids now, when you yell heads, they still don't know. They don't know. They're looking around. They still don't know what to do. So, so when you look at, uh, you know, the award was for community leader. So I'm just, in a sense, though, why did it take you so long to say yes? I'm not an, I, I don't want to be front and center. I'm very comfortable being behind the scenes and just uh, letting things, or making things happen. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, it's nice to be appreciated because I know that I'm going to be out of this in a couple of years and I'm going to miss it. So it's, you know, it's nice to have everybody come in one place and, you know, I can give my thanks for, for everybody jumping in and helping out and doing what they have to do to make everybody's ball experience. Was it, was it a nervous week for you? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> it was that interview, the first person he interviewed, I thought, oh my God, is it going to go this long for me? I hope not. <laughs> but he's, he's very good. He makes everybody feel at ease. Yeah, I think I think it's kind of. A, I mean, I know people don't volunteer for recognition, but at the same time, volunteers need to be recognized. Yeah. So, so I, I just kind of, for yourself, what what do you feel? How, how baseball is developing, or is there anything you want to say about baseball in general in, in Poco, or what you're hoping happens in the future? I just I hope that that uh, I know between some of the some of the different divisions and some of the different clubs, there's a little bit of um, challenges, you know, and I hope everybody's there for the same reason we got to keep these kids playing and healthy and enjoying the game and having fun and not um gosh what would i no animosity between kids between teams we don't need that in the world right now we need these kids just to go out and have fun on a sunny day and just just enjoy themselves and the parents too the parents have to enjoy themselves too or it's not gonna it's not gonna work for anybody and you look at baseball in Canada in general, and especially Western Canada, that we seem to be kind of developing, based on per capita, a lot of good players, you know, male or female. So is there a re reason why you think that's happening? You know, I think it's it's uh, the coach's dedication to the kids, too. You know, the coaches and the parents, and sometimes these kids, they, they just don't want to play, but as long as we keep um, growing and giving them opportunities and showing them where they can go, like how far they can take it, um, I think that's really, really important. So what would you say to folks out there who just put their kids in base, baseball or just coming to their first game and, uh, and, and you want to kind of convince them to become 
in a sense, you or, or a volunteer, what do you would like to say to those folks? Put down your phone, watch your kid play. They, your, your kid is, is having the time of his life and you know, you gotta, you gotta watch things and you gotta, um, see how they get it and see how they, they learn and how they grow with the game. Because they may not look like they're doing too much at the younger ages, but oh my gosh, by the time they get 12, 13 years old, they are good. They are good. Just watch what they can do. And is there anything you want to pass on to folks out there that I haven't asked you at all? Go out and, go out and see your kids play ball. Don't, don't stay at home. Uh, bring the grandparents. They're only going to be this age for just a little, little bit of time. And then they're gone. My son's aging out. He's done baseball. He wants to move on to other things, you know, and, and I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss that. Well, hopefully we still see you at the park or, or I won't be there because I'm, I'm watching soccer. But I want to thank you on behalf of the city of Poco for all you've done. And uh, congratulations on your award. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's continue on with uh, celebrating those who are here. Time now for our outstanding adult athlete award. Our first nominee, Jasmine Durang. Fourth place in the team pursuit at the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games, a two-time Canadian champion in the individual pursuit, and races professionally for 24 Pro Cycling. There is Jen Salling, Olympic bronze medalist for Canada's softball in the Olympics. Batting average 571, the best of all batters during the 16 tournament and Olympic tournament record. Recorded five RBIs and a couple of doubles. And Ryan Slater. A member of our men's national volleyball team. Quarterfinals in the Olympics for Team Canada. Plays in Europe professionally with the French club Montpellier. There you go. There we are. Four coat, top athletes, all dealing with the Olympics. Just shows all the success you have. The recipient of the Adult Athlete Award. What a, uh, what a great year it was for Dren Jen Salling, who is busy now in a coaching role with our national team, but we had a chance to sit down to her, tell you her story about this incredible year. Please welcome Jen's mom, Marilyn, to the stage to accept the award on her behalf. Okay, so can you just tell us, uh, tell us why we're here and why you have that beautiful award? Jen uh, received the uh, Adult Athlete of the Year for Port Coquitlam, so yeah, she's a uh, bronze medalist for the softball, national softball team. Yeah, and I, I guess your mom, when you, you came down, you were just excited. At first, I thought you'd won the award, but it must feel like you have. <laughs> well, I think we all won the award as a family. Um, with her, with Scott being here and the whole family, I think we just all achieved something together. Yeah. Like throughout her life. And he's just as gifted as she is, but he's just more like wants to do everything, but she just kind of pinpointed everything and they're very grounded. And when they want something, they're going to go get it. So what is it like playing sport in Poco, Scott? It's, um, it's, it's, it's definitely special for sure. When you go to like a school like Terry Fox or come up in the community, the, the values of Terry Fox really do are prevalent. So you do get to see the, the quality coaching, the, the overall tribe of Terry uh, Port Coquitlam really is significant. So, um, yeah, it's a community. That's all I can really say about that. But, mm -hmm. but so, 
So, so for for the fact, I know she can't be here because she's practicing for something, I guess, or she's she's a um, one of the national team coaches now. So they're picking their selection team. Yep. For the next future national team. So yeah. Yeah. And so so this week, you know, I know sometimes awards is sort of like you know there's, there's not now it's like 500 people sitting here and everybody comes up is it's kind of a little bit of nerves and flutter. So so how did you feel uh, today or this week? It's, well, that's why I'm, yeah. I'm dragging him. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like yeah. So we've just been kind of. Well, you do it as a team. We do everything as a team, as a family, right? Yeah. That's kind of the like, thing. It's you know, even when one of us gets an award of some nature, we really try to share it, and it's it's hard to kind of. We're not not any one of us is really great with the the focal point of it's a team sport win, yeah. right? So when you get an individual award, when you're a team sport athlete, it gets a little bit you know overwhelming when you get the spotlight shone on you. But it's all for the greater good of everything, you know. So yeah, it's a great honor, regardless. So anything you want to say about your, your sister's athletic prowess that you sort of uh, stands out and you think, oh, my God, she's uh, not my little sister anymore. She's pretty good. Well, that was, I used to be uh, – Jen used to be Scott's younger sister, and now I'm Jennifer's older brother. So she's uh, – <laughs> yeah, she's taken over. She's just evolved in such a fabulous leader, a great human being. She's got the accolades like you wouldn't believe, but yet she just re remains so humble. And I think that's just a reflection of the, the family values and, like I said, going to Terry Fox High School, being coached by so many great leaders – they just instill that it's about the team first and the last name second. So, yeah, she's uh, she's just a world class person on top of being an athlete. Yeah, and why why do you think it's so important that we have award shows in Port Coquitlam? Uh, to, uh, you know, in the sense of like where it feels like it's something really special because there's, there's a bunch of folks out there uh, who are just grade twelve. It's like their second prom. So, just yeah. just your thoughts about that? Well, to me personally, I think is we didn't even know Port Coquitlam existed on the map because we grew up in the east end of Vancouver. So coming out here, it's kind of like, what's Porco Quitlam? But when these guys grew up and went to school out here, both in like, you could see the sports excelling, all the talent that when he played hockey, football, soccer, and Jennifer playing basketball, volleyball, like you could see how the community excels with the young generation coming up. Hopefully we don't lose it, but th their generation was very strong minded and the excellent coaching that they both had, you know, school, club sports, yeah. uh, everything was just unbelievable. Yeah, well, see, I, I played uh, Poco football in 1981 and we were, wow. we, we were okay, I but I, <laughs> yeah, there you go. We could we could have bumped into each other at yeah, some point, yeah. but I just know that it's going to get better because I, I you know I watched the the Ravens play a couple of times and it's it's a different game obviously. But so uh, what what do you what do you as you as an alumnus of the of that sport what do you what do you see when you look back at uh, your career and and where it's going? Um, yeah, the game has changed. Uh, the main thing I think for us now is trying to just lead by example as quality, lead, paying the message forward to the young athletes that. The same values person first athlete second and work ethic and just whatever you want to like jennifer's a perfect example of whatever you want to go for still put the time in deep practice and and focus on whatever it is that you want to accomplish is going to take time and it's going to take work so um but looking back on the football programs you just wish them the best of just it's a great time in your life to develop have some fun and just enjoy the process when you're at that age because you know after you're done you know it is as you, after you get done it's it's on to real life kind of thing. So, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool time. So. And anything you want to add about Jen before we say goodbye? I don't even know what to add about our daughter, his sister. The, the devotion, the work ethic, the loyalty, passion, empathy. Um, I, I can't describe her any more yeah. than just she's a gift. Yeah. Well, you, you, you're you a, a great daughter. You have a, a, a great family, but you have a great mom as well. Thank you. So they said, you know, Jen's mom's coming. I didn't, I didn't. But I, I think it's uh, like anything, community and parents and family is all part of that. Yeah. So thanks for coming and, yeah. and, and and wish her all the best when she hands yeah. over that Thank award. Thank you very much. Thank it's our pleasure. Thank you. Yep. Show the joke. Oh. Because it's time to celebrate another.
community leader. You heard about him. Thirty-eight years at Poco Minor Softball, president of the club for thirty-five years. You heard what Jen was talking about. Daniel Laurie, also someone who helped, continues coaching in Poco Minor Softball today, getting the applause of a rock star. Please welcome to the stage a great community leader, Bob Buck. So, Bob, congratulations on your Community Leader Award. Thank you. Can you tell us uh, what that means uh, to get it tonight? It means a lot. It's, uh, it's not something you, you stay in the game for, but it's nice to know that somebody recognizes what you've done, and, and it's, it's been great. It's been really good. So, so were you a little nervous this week when I was coming up this week and thought, i got to walk up that stage? I was scared to death. <laughs> I figured... Uh, Perry was going to get singing or do some stupid thing, and that's yeah. not for me. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, we heard some laughter, so I'm sure you had some some good questions. Perry always has oh, yeah. some good questions. Yeah, so, what 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 does it mean? Uh, do you think baseball to to Port Coquitlam? I think what it should mean is we're keeping a lot of kids off the streets and giving them a place to play and learn, and not just about softball, but life and that in general. So. Uh, and the city has been great. You couldn't find a better city or a better organization than uh, the one we have here with the... Uh, sport Alliance. Sport Alliance, it's a, yeah. Yeah, there are yeah. a lot of Sport Alliance. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's just been great. So could you tell us a little bit about your, you know, if you look really quick, uh, look back on your on your career and your volunteering as a player and, and you know, what has baseball meant to you and sort of... What led you to this moment? It's it's been my life. I like I started playing little league baseball when I was eight years old, and I played baseball right up until I was eighteen. Then all my friends went to softball, so I went to softball. Then uh, I had people ask me to coach women's softball, so I went and coached women's softball. Got married, had kids. They played softball, uh, and like I said out there, I didn't want to umpire and. When you're not coaching or doing something, you're the one that's going to umpire the game. So I decided I'll get involved and, and coach and, and finally got into the executive. So, so when you, I mean, for me, I'm, as a, as a sp uh, soccer player, I always I laughed at the other baseball players, you know, that sort of a, the little valley of death between the two fields. Right. But, um, but baseball seems to be one of those sort of short and intense sports uh, where some teams, you know, is, is it kind of just all crashed into like 12 weeks or 14 weeks, it seems? Yeah, it is. I, like, I, I grew up, soccer was my game, too. I grew up playing soccer. I had my trial with the Vancouver uh, 76ers at the time, and I just got into baseball, and uh, I've always been a Yankee fan, so that's kept me going. And uh, it just, I don't know, the love of the game and... Uh, I'd, I'd match it against any sport. So, so what, what do you what do you hope? Uh, what do you see? Uh, you hope or or aspirations for baseball and Poco for the next few years? Baseball or softball? I'm in softball. Oh, sorry, I softball. I want to see McLean Park become a stadium. I want to see rep teams in all the divisions, uh, and I just want it to be a place for little kids to grow up and play the game. It's, it's amazing. That's what I want to see. If I can be around when when they do that, I'll be happier now. And so, what is what? And for most folks out there, what is what is it the difference in your mind between baseball and softball? Like the difference in the sense of uh, the competition or what it brings as a different game. It's a different game. Everybody says it's a kid, sissy game. You know, you play softball if you're a boy. It's a sissy game. Well, I had Danny Lori who was one of the best pitchers in Canada. And she took on baseball players 
that were heavy hitters, and she made them look stupid. So it's not a sissy game. It's a game that uh, should be played by people that want to play it. Uh, and enjoy the game. Every game's different. Everybody's got a different opinion. Like some people don't like slow pitch because it's not a fast moving game. But you know, you got more people playing slow pitch than any sport there is probably right now because it's a fun time and you can play with your girlfriend, your wife, your daughter, whatever. You can play with them. So it's, it's, uh, it's whatever sport you like. As long as you're in sport, you're, you're doing a good thing. That's so, so, so for me, I, I want to tell you my baseball stories. I can't hit. I'm, I'm like one of those people who can't hit anything. So, <laughs> until I close my eyes, and, and, and then something happens. But, but what do you? What would you say to folks out there who are like looking at baseball? They put their kids into baseball, uh, and they're sort of nervous about getting going. What would you? What would you say to those folks? I'd say come on out and give it the shot because there's a place for every kid in softball. Every girl, every boy at a certain age. Uh, we have we got room for it. You don't have to be good. You don't have to be a star. I mean, we've been going a long time, and we've had maybe one superstar come out of here, and uh, she was born that way. Like, so I just feel free to come out. We'd love to have you, uh, and it's a great sport. You'll have fun. That's that's what sports all about: having fun, meeting people, making new friends, and that's to me where you get it from. So I hope you get your, your baseball diamond in McLean Park. And uh, I want to thank you very much for the, on behalf of the City of Port Quitlam for all the stuff you've done for, for softball and, uh, and all the best with the award. Okay, thank you very much. Much appreciated. You're welcome. Sir. The newest member of the Port Coquitlam Hall of Fame, Don Van Oss. Can you tell us what that, uh, why you're here and what that means to you? Well, <laughs> I mean, I think when a coach goes in a Hall of Fame, it means I'm getting kind of old. Um, but it does mean a lot that, you know, hours and hours and hours spent in gyms with uh, everyone else's kids except my own. And uh, so it, uh, um, it's pretty special when people recognize it and uh, in particular this community it's uh, it's a real honor can you tell us a bit about like you know for yourself uh with basketball like the whole from your either you, did you play it when you were young sort of as as you no, sort of no that's the that's kind of what's funny about it uh i was a, a baseball hockey player and i went down uh i ended up playing baseball down at the university of north dakota uh, those were the sports that I really loved. But when I came back home to British Columbia with my teaching degree, I needed a job. And one of the first things back in those days, they could ask you if you're willing to coach. I said, I can coach. They, I said, sure, I'll, I'll coach. They said, what can you coach? I said, I can coach anything. What do you need? Well, we could use a basketball coach. I said, I can do that. So, so when you kind of as a coach of a different sport, you know, what, what in the sense of moving from something you've played to now, you know, you said you can coach anything. Right, right. But, but it's, it's kind of like uh, you just felt that it was just a human game that you could, you know, you, different rules. But what made you feel so confident that you could actually coach anything? I, I, I had a dad that was a great coach and he coached soccer, he coached baseball. And I learned a ton from him about uh, not so much X's and O's of any sport, but about communicating with kids, about motivating kids, about um, uh, getting kids disciplined. And um, he, he taught me so much. And then I had a couple of really good coaches, a guy named Dave Schill. When I first uh, played baseball with the uh, Coquitlam Reds, uh, Dave was one of the best coaches I ever had. And then later on, as a as a uh, an adult, when I first came back from North Dakota, I had a fastball coach, uh, Barry Barry O'Neill, and I learned so much from Barry as well. And it wasn't about 
knowing the game as much because uh, it was about how do I organize these kids into doing to learn basketball. Then I just I just hung around basketball people. My best friend uh, uh, and ended up coaching. I, I ended up coaching with Richie Chambers. I used to go to his house and uh, he was my he was our big rival at Centennial. We were at Port Coquitlam Secondary and then Terry Fox, but he would share anything. Uh, we had a group of guys, Rich Goulet, Ken Dockendorf, Brian Fichter. And then through Richie, I got to meet Ken Shields, a Canadian national team coach, and I learned a ton from Ken. Coaches had all kinds of time for me. And then as coaches, we'd all go to the coaching clinics. We'd go to Seattle, Las Vegas, and I'd listen to these big NCAA coaches. So I just kept immersing myself with information and I knew how I wanted to organize my team. I just needed the knowledge of the, the, the sport. Um, I mean, I always say, God, I would have loved to coach baseball. It's my favorite sport, but uh, they don't have baseball teams in high school. So, but uh, you know, b basketball, and, and you know, now, you know, we're so looking at uh, Poco High, Terry Fox, and sort of in, in the sense of, uh, it seems in Poco, with it's it's, you know, it's become one of the bigger sports in in for high school, and, and is that kind of was that did that surprise you? Um, you know, through the years, we got accused of recruiting, and. We never recruited a player. Our program recruited the, the players. And what I mean by that is that good players wanted to play in good programs. And that's what happened. And so we had kids starting to move into our area so they could come to Terry Fox. And so success, it's a cliche, but success kind of breeded success. And as we, I mean, in the 90s, we went to six Final Fours. We won two. Um, we went to six Final Fours, four Finals, and we won two of them. And so kids that were looking to play in good programs, they would come to Terry Fox. And uh, did it surprise me? I, you know what? I never even kept track of it. I just coached. And I coached to the best of my ability, and I made sure that those kids worked hard, were good sportsmen, uh, had good sportsmanship, had great attitudes, good team players. And we never, ever, um, uh, we never, ever um, trumpeted the individuals. It was always about team and representing Terry was our goal. If we went out and represented Terry, Fox the person, we were winners regardless of what our win-loss record was. And we pushed that a lot. And, and the thing, uh, do you see any difference between yourself when you're sort of that first coach? You know, so I'll, I'll take on the basketball and, and, and yourself as a coach now. I mean, I, mean, I coach yeah. soccer and you're... Yeah, when I first started, I, uh, I, I didn't know very much. And I'd sit out there. I had a really good team in 1986. We won the Fraser Valleys. Good bunch of guys that were totally committed. Uh, but I, I wasn't, a, I didn't know the game well enough and I kind of let those guys down at the BCs. Um, I didn't prepare them properly and I learned from that. And so every year I kept pushing after that. And, but I went through a bad cycle where you, it doesn't matter how great a coach you are. If you haven't got the athletes, it doesn't matter. But, uh, we got a good group of athletes coming through, uh, two of them played, uh, they mentioned Chris Zarka tonight, but Brett Anderson already is in the Poco Sports Hall of Fame. He played with the BC Lions for 13 years. When you get athletes like that, uh, Dave Morgan, who played uh, with Portland in uh, Major Lacrosse Association, professional lacrosse, played with the New West Salmon Bellies, played in Europe basketball for 10 years. Those are pretty special athletes. And now, once you got the athletes, the thoroughbreds, you got to teach them how to win. And uh, that's what we did. So the last question is like when you, now as you're kind of uh, looking for the next, you know, sort of uh, teacher to take on a sport or another coach to come into the system. Um, this is a loaded question. <laughs> you know, what, what advice would you give them? Well, 
I mean, trying to get teachers uh, to coach now is um, it's a little more challenging. But I think that uh, you got to be yourself. You got to establish your own identity as a coach. You can't try and be like someone else. And um, and then you've got to. I strongly recommend that every player on that team has to be. They're not. They're all unique. And some aren't the same as others, but it has to be a collective team. And you got to teach them all to be good teammates uh, with great attitudes and representing to the school with class and professionalism. Second. Time now for our next award. The Outstanding Junior Athlete of the Year. Lord Clements from Terry Fox Basketball. Right. I won Outstanding Junior Athlete of the Year award, and it's very I'm very honored and really happy that I mean I won this award, but it's I wasn't expecting it, and I was I'm not playing basketball just for like awards or anything like that. So this is just like unexpected. So. And so you guys had a great season, of course, right? Yeah. So so uh, w w tell us a little, bit, a little bit about the season. Um, well, it's we started grade nine. We were playing. All grade, as all grade nines in junior, and then we won, th and we went 35 and 0, so it was undefeated. And then, I mean, we played grade 10, and then COVID hit, and so we couldn't play in grade 11. And then it came to grade 12, it was just like a whole nother level, and we had some ups and downs, some wins and losses, but we pushed through and won the BC championship. Pushed through and just won the BC championship. So, so, so. Uh, uh, what what does it kind of what does basketball mean to you? Um, it, it means community because I mean, you meet so many people and you have all these friends that support you and help you through the basketball journey and same as the coaches and it's just a whole big community and it's yeah nice. Yeah. So when did you, when did you start realizing that you were a basketball player? I think I realized because I used to play soccer so and then someone brought me to play basketball and I hated it at first but then I started playing more and then it made me realize that I really like this sport and I think I could possibly be a basketball player. So so if you look at the season what was probably the one of the highlights for yourself? For me it's probably getting 45 points in the semifinals. Yeah. yeah but I'm mean, probably as a team would be winning the BC championship and beating our number one rivals, Riverside. Yeah, my, my son went to Riverside, so we're, we're so happy you beat Riverside. No, just kidding. Um, so so what would you say to sort of, uh, and of course, you're, you're just a junior, so what do you hope to, or, or and we saw at the beginning, it's not the end, right? So so what, what do you think is the, what does the next few years look like? I'm going, I'm committed to University of Fraser Valley and playing basketball there on a scholarship and studying a Bachelor of Arts. And then I'm also playing on the BC Summer Games team this summer. So your career is just like rocketing, I guess. Yes, it is. So so I, I think I asked you this question before, but like, uh, what would you say to some uh, young lady who's who's thinking, or who's played soccer, but should, should try basketball? What would you say to her? I think just like try and do, and just try things out and if, you know, yeah, just like try and do. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, anything I, I haven't asked you that you'd like to pass on to everybody out there? I just wanted to say um, sometimes life gets you down and sometimes like because I lost um, Karen Kwong and she's been a huge part of my life and I've just been like dedicating this whole thing to her. So hashtag 2K strong. Yeah. It's beautiful because I get to drive by and they've, they've put a sign up, I guess, one of the box across there or the up on the hill there. So, well, thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, congratulations on winning and, and all the best in your future athletic and educational career. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm going to run over here just to make it official. I told you they had a tough time. We had two winner, winners from Riverside Girls Volleyball. <laughs> 
Mr. Trask. So Annika, congratulations on your Outstanding Junior Athlete Award. Can you tell everybody um, what sport you play, what school you go to, and what the award means to you? Okay. Um, I play volleyball. I go to Riverside Secondary. And this award, it's just, it's just fantastic because I feel like it's not me getting the award. I feel like it's just my team in general just because my position is, in volleyball is kind of like the quarterback of the team. So I just feel like it's more of a team thing because we did it together. I guess it's the same as basketball as it is with volleyball, but yeah. Yeah, I play football, so the, but the quarterback always got all the creds, you know, just. Uh, well, I guess my position's like the <laughs> silent quarterback, I guess, like, yeah. But this, this is not just a normal year. I mean, you guys have, and gals have done some amazing things. Can you explain to folks what, what happened this year? Yeah, for sure. We ended up winning the Quad A Provincial Senior Girl Championships yeah. for high school. Which is like, go Rapids, go. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, exactly. And our senior girls basketball team actually lost to Terry Fox in the finals. So. <laughs> yeah, well, they should have joined volleyball instead of that, I guess. I know. Some of the volleyball girls defected to basketball. So <laughs> So, so what, what do you love about volleyball and playing volleyball at the high school level? I love the team aspects, the able the ability to be like a leader when you want to. I, I had a great coach from a young age. My dad like used to play volleyball, so he coached me when I was really young and he showed me all of the like things that you have to do to be able to be a good leader, a good teammate. And I think that's that's what it's really all about. And I've always been really competitive and volleyball considering my parents played it and my competitiveness, it just felt natural to go that way. Yeah, it's kind of one of those games where I, I played volleyball, I thought it would be fun and easy, and it turned out to be, you know, actually painful. So um, so what do you love about volleyball? I love the fact that in my position, I get to touch the every every third ball around because I'm the setter. So I pretty much contact every third ball. So I like I like that. I like the fact that there's so much competitiveness in it. I like the fact that I don't have to run a ton. Let's be honest, I don't have, I'm not very good at running. So that I love even just diving for balls, being all the different aspects with that. So. Yeah. And so, I mean, that you talk about that rivalry, you got, you got Terry Fox and, and Riverside. It, it's almost like a cross town rivalry, right? So how does that feel to, in, in Poco? Um, well, I guess it's probably it's a good thing and a bad thing. I used to be on the Riverside basketball team and there was just a huge rivalry with Fox, especially since we never beat them. But it was with volleyball, I feel like it's not the same because a lot of us are friends outside of it. So there's not as big of a rivalry in it because our club teams are the same, the Coquitlam Ducks. So we're all just friends out of there. Yeah. So, so, uh, and what is it? What uh, for yourself with coaching? What is it like with the uh, the coaching staff at the at Riverside? And and sort of any highlights from the year uh, that you would like to bring up? Oh, the coaching is phenomenal. I've had the same coaches. I've been lucky to have the same coaches in high school as in uh, club season for the past six years. I'd say so. It's great, Brian G. Especially he's. Uh, I guess he's being nominated tonight. It's just great to have the same coach for a number of years and our highlight for sure i think more than winning the final was winning the um the semi-final for provincials just because it was we had two games that day the semi-finals and the provincial finals and both went to five which is the highest you can possibly go in volleyball and it was two and a half hours in the same day so it was just two and a half hours of just a grueling game against a team we'd never played before and they were a bit of a surprise to us so that was just a fantastic win so well congratulations on your uh outstanding junior athlete award all the best in your future athletic and academic career and uh Uh, 
Uh, I'm Matt Kerwin. Um, I've won the Courage to Come Back Award and it's amazing. I mean, this award is incredible for um, acknowledging kids that have come back from a, you know, an illness to play sports. And it's crazy. I mean, standing there in front of my friends and family, just explaining what I've done, it's truly magical and breathtaking. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess for, for me, sometimes you, you, uh, you know, as an adult, kids are sick, right, or have a, an ailment, you, you want them to not be sick. Right. So, and, and I, so just kind of a little bit about the, uh, you know, sort of inspired you to kind of just push forward. Um, just hanging out with my buddies. I mean, I've always loved hanging out with my friends and getting cheered on by coaches and actually improving in what I do and just getting back and wanting to improve and play with my buddies again. That's really what pushed me to play. So, 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 uh, give it, did you find yourself, uh, were you, were you getting treatment when you were actually were still playing and it was it kind of like you had to take a break? Um, it was a little break between the treatment and playing. They wanted to make sure I was fully okay before I started playing. Um, but that didn't stop me from hanging out with my buddies at home and playing a little in the backyard. Yeah. Or giving them a hard time. Did you just go to the game and, and yell instructions? Yeah. <laughs> giving my buddies a hard time from the outfield is always a great time. So, so, and, and you know, as a, as a young person, what, what, and as an athlete, you, you're supposed to feel tired occasionally. You're supposed to feel a little worn out because you're, you're working hard. Like, so what would you advise to other athletes that maybe just should be saying, you know, is this normal or should I go see somebody? Yeah. I mean, you always get tired after a game, but before you get there, if you're tired, there's probably something, you know, you need to tell your parents about, um, before every game, um, you know, I was getting drained, just getting out of the car and walking up the stairs at school, just the little things, um, not participating in PE class. Um, yeah, that really drained me and it sucked, but I'm glad I'm back to it. So, and what does sport mean to you? Like when you, when you think about it, what does it mean to you in general as a person? Uh, sport to me is always like bonding with my teammates. It's not always about winning and losing. It's about having a good time with my buddies and learning how to play a sport and getting better at it. And, and what is it like playing sport in Port Coquitlam? It's amazing. I mean, it's so nice and there's so many opportunities I can have, whether it's with soccer and baseball and hockey and just all the other sports we have here in Poco. It's great. And you play soccer too. So you got, you're a baseball soccer guy. Yep. So how do you, how, that's, that's not a conflict, right? You, you can play those together. Nope. It's uh, baseball in the summer and soccer in the winter. So there's a nice two week gap that I get to relax. So, so uh, anything you want to pass on to folks out there, just, just, you know, what do you want to say or anything you'd like to say? Yeah, just, I mean, keep positive. There's something going on in your life. There's always sports you can turn to to try and lighten up the mood. I mean, that's what I did, and it really helped me out and get through my troubles. Well, well, Matt, I, I'm glad that, uh, you know, you're, you're feeling better and things are looking good, and, uh, and I think you are at least uh, inspirational to all of us, and thanks for coming by. Thank you. Let's move on to our next award this evening. The recipient of the Coaching Staff of the Year Award goes to... So just uh, uh, coaches from the Poco Pirates, tell us what we're here tonight for and, and what you just won. Uh, we won coaching staff of the year. Yeah. Uh, so we coach, uh, we are uh, bronze medalists at Provincials, uh, won the Lower Mainland Championship at the U15 level. Um, here celebrating with the guys. Um, we're kind of regardless of the award, just a chance to get everybody back together in June. But, but at the same time, though, it's, it's not just, you know, you know, even bronze. I mean, the, for Poco Pirates, this is the first, the furthest that they've ever gone, right? So, so how, did, how did that feel when you're in the city and, and people are saying to you, oh, we've never gone that far before? How did it feel? It felt, uh, felt good. It was uh, a nice accomplishment. We we're pretty proud to take this group that far and compete at that level because a lot of these kids haven't competed at that level before. I think, I don't know if it's settled for everybody. 
I really don't know if it has. I think maybe by the time we get back to the rink next year, I think it'll be a little different because um, we were the last team playing. So a lot of we've seen internal, but we haven't really seen a lot of people to be able to kind of share the experience. And, you know, obviously tonight's a great opportunity to do that. So, yeah. And, and we've got like three Rosses here. Yeah. So <laughs> related, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, me and Greg are twins and Ryan's a little brother. So we do this as a family to get us out of the house and keep us active and have some fun. So this is like the fourth. We're trying. No, we're trying. We're trying. Get... <laughs> he, he doesn't want to change his name. So. Yeah. If you got a sister, he's got to marry her or something. <laughs> figure it. We'll find a way. So, so um, hockey is big in Canada, but in Poco, it always seemed to be uh, a struggle, I guess. So, so what was the difference between this year and, and other years for the Pirates? Um, realistic expectation, uh, but also a change from us. Um, there's a lot of people out there I could probably compete with who's the most competitive one. Um, but just changing the changing everything's done. Have some fun with it, work on some things, allow the guys to be loose, even though we're not used to doing that those things. You know, it's supposed to be focus on the game and you know, just an opportunity to really just let everybody play. The with the new facility now, obviously Ryan also coaches the U eighteen team in Poco, so we we're able to have a kind of a good night at the rink and you know, we had three or four teams playing and there'd be, by the end of it, I think there was probably 300 people or 400 people at games. So it's just kind of trying to bring the fun back by um, things that we can control. Yeah, and so you talk about the new rink and we got three sheets of ice uh, and they talk about ice all year. So is that, is that gonna really, as coaches, help you to, if you do well in a playoff or you're starting early, is, is that really important? Yeah, we hope so. I mean, I think the, uh, as, crazy as it sounds, it's probably maybe more beneficial coaching wise than, than it was, but it was nice to actually uh, kind of see the group early. We get to start a little earlier than we normally do um, and all that. So yeah, in terms of in terms of that, it's it's nice to be able to go into a place that feels like home. Um, I think even the last couple of years, well, COVID year, but um, with all the construction going on, it kind of feels like it's ours now. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, the, the two ranks we had before were beautiful, but it's nice to kind of have something that feels like ours. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I know as a fan, though, it's kind of interesting because, you know, like, I think sport uh, at all levels can be entertaining. I mean, every, every level costs different, but it's like when you go in the rec center, it's got heat. I was wearing a jacket. Next thing you know, I'm wearing a T-shirt. So so you yeah. talk about the fans. So you, you think the setup of the building has really created this this sort of uh, osmosis of people staying and watching? I think for Saturday nights, you have every single A1 team playing. So people come for the Pee Wee game, then they'll come for the, the U15 game, and then the U18 game, and they'll stay. And the players from the, team, the games before will stay. Um, and then even, you know, hockey one, two, three, four, Timbits kids are there. And that's going to help us going forward that all these kids are staying in hockey and they're going to keep developing and then one day they're going to have one of us four and try to repeat what we did this year so yeah because because that's good because sometimes you think of those like a uh, prairie promises the rink rats you know you're there so that's all they have to do is is just you know play or watch the game but it sounds like uh the way you're explaining it is that you've got this community is just continuing to rally around hockey which is which is important the uh a good example of that is uh, the U18 team had a playoff game in Squamish at 9 o'clock at night, and the entire Bantam team came on a bus, including fans. We f filled three buses and took it up to Squamish so we didn't lose home ice. It, Poco's a hockey town. Perfect. And then so so what? So outside the fans, I guess if people want to watch hockey, they should come out on a Saturday night and watch it. And, and what do you say to, uh, to any folks out there that, uh, that want to help you guys or support you guys or, or hockey in any way? Uh, come see us anytime. We're always available. We're always around the rink. Um, you know, we obviously appreciate all the support we do get. Um, but anybody that ever wants to be involved will never say no. Um, you know, and, and there's always somebody that's willing to help or throw in a hand or just wants to be entertained on a Saturday night, and we can do that. So. Make your way up, guys.
congratulations, everyone, on the Hall of Fame induction for the Terry Fox basketball. And I'm dating yourself, 92 to 93. So how does that feel? It, it, it feels great. I mean, it's 29 years ago. So when, you know, when we got the call, it was a little bit of a shock to, to be recognized for something that we achieved <laughs> such a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, of course, anytime your achievements are recognized and, and, and you can be, celebrate those achievements, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. So, so why 92, 93? Why not? What, hap what, hap what happened? Well, we had a pretty special group coming into that. I mean, there's a, a number of us that played several sports together, more so than just, just the basketball. It was, it was a number of sports growing up. And so we were, we were a pretty connected group. And, and when um, some of the guys from, from the south side of Poco came and joined us, it was almost, <laughs> it was almost seamless. It was almost seamless. It was. We, we accepted them, even though they're from the sell side. But, uh, but yeah, they, they, they made us that much better. So, yeah, we, we were a pretty special group. Well, I was a north side boy who married a south side girl. Sounds like a oh, Billy Joel song. Oh. But, but here's the thing, the rivalry. You, you think of 92, 93, and now you've got this kind of crosstown rivalry. Uh, and we talked to some of the young players here, and they kind of talked about that. Did, did you kind of, did, how does that feel when you, when you hear, hear there's a kind of this inter-rivalry in Boca? Between the two high schools now? Yes. Well, working at Terry Fox, I know the rivalry is real. <laughs> um, coaching soccer, coaching basketball, and, and seeing all these other sports, we know that you know Riverside and, and Terry Fox, there's, there's a, definitely a, um, a sense of pride when the two schools are playing against each other. Um, and and, and you know, I think ultimately it's a good thing, right? It's, you know, when you've got that competition, that internal competition, it, it just makes everyone better. As, as you see tonight, we've got winners from, from both schools, and it's, it's great to celebrate. So a question to Coach Al. Why is 92-93 so special? Well, we picked up a lot of good coaches. <laughs> and, and Rich. We got Van Ross, who even though he ate all our food, <laughs> he was still a good guy. So, just, just good people and hard work and uh, same old, same old. And I was the rugby coach. If they didn't play well at basketball, they had to come out and play rugby and they didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so any stories from 1993, it's like a long time ago. So anybody got a story from 1993 that they remember? Going to the tournament, we, we rode the same bus with the same bus driver every day, the same song. It ended at the same part that we're coming off the bus and just those That's memories come music. back. And that bus driver ran into him 20 years later. He remembered everyone's name on the team because that's how connected he was to the group because we felt connected together and anyone that joined us became part of that group. And you know, I think that's a great story. <laughs> that was a rival bus driver. <laughs> Outstanding community leader. Let me tell you about Fred Malberg. Poco Eurorite FC president from 2012 to 2021, now the past president, helped bring Eurorite in as a title sponsor for the club to ensure prices stayed affordable for family, board member from 12 years, and we know the growth of soccer here. Fred, make your way to your stage, please. Accept the award. Community leader. So, uh, Fred, congratulations. I, you've got the uh, Community Leader Award. Could you tell us uh, kind of for what sport and what it means to you? Uh, no, the Community Leader Award was in recognition of uh, the Poco Soccer and the uh, both as a coach, but primarily as a club president for 12 years. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I, you know, I play soccer, so I know you've done a lot for soccer. So what, what drove you to kind of uh, put so much effort into that sport? Well, I had, I had three kids playing in the club, and um, I was coaching in the club as well. But, but really what I saw a club that needed to uh, get restructured because we were, we were planning, you know, week to week and, and month to month at the longest time frame. And, and to get a stable club, you needed to uh, step back and look at the big picture and, and put some plans in place. And there's some big things happening in Poco when it comes to soccer. Can you tell us a bit about that? 
Yeah, no, we just got the announcement a few months ago that uh, BC Soccer is going to be uh, in partnering with a, a new facility here at Gates Park, and it's uh, it's going to be a little mini stadium with a synthetic field, and uh, BC Soccer is going to be doing some training programs out of the facility, but but primarily it's going to be a facility to be used by the community for uh, sports groups from high schools and uh, our youth club and and adult players as well. So it'll be a, it'll be a fantastic facility for our community. And so why is that that kind of infrastructure so important? I mean, like, you know, if you go back 30, 40 years, you're playing on gravel fields with, you know, two lights. So and, and now that it's changed, how does that help the game? You know, I think I think with the busy lifestyle that everybody has now, families want, you know, predictability in sport. And 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 so when with gravel fields or grass fields, um, they easily get closed due to cold weather or due to heavy rainfall. So. So really, the, the new the new lifestyle is people want you know if their practice is on Wednesday night they want to practice on Wednesday night if the games at 8, 8, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning they need, they want that predictability and that's what a synthetic field does is it it's playable you know 365 days a year and uh, that's really what uh, sort of encourages higher participation levels and then and and just makes it more accessible to everybody. So how does the World Cup qualification and sort of the new center going to basically Help not the sport, but just the sport in poker. Yeah, no, I think I think it uh, with the World Cup. You now the men's team here qualified the first time now for almost forty years. So and it's a you know fantastic opportunity for everybody to uh, to get you know a little bit more exposure to the world game. And the uh, I think it'll give a good opportunity to host some tournaments here at provincial level as well. And, and uh, a training center, you know, maybe some of the little kids can see some of the, the elite, elite youth athletes from the province come train here, and then it'll be a little bit inspiring for them, something for them to strive to. Yeah, and then for Poco, I mean, uh, I mean, is there kind of a rivalry, you think, between within the region? And if so, what, what do you see that rival be, rivalry being? Yeah, no, we uh, our big the, big, the big brother to the west has always been Coquitlam, and um, maybe team to team, it's a rivalry, but... Uh, but we're, it's really a good relationship we have with them as well, and and uh, I know it wasn't just uh, our community here supporting the, the 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 facility here, but it was the wider community as well. We had the support of uh, the the all the Tri Cities community supported uh, with BC Soccer and in, 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 uh, getting their support behind the, the field. So it's uh, I think it's something that Poco can uh, take advantage of, but also the wider community. So it should be a, a positive for for a lot of families. Yeah, and just for me, because I play sport here, I don't think you undervalue the, what the executive can do for a sport. Like you know, you uh, and and what does that, what does that feel like for yourself? What what do you get out of that when you sort of see the changes over the last you know, you know ten plus years with with uh, the stuff you've been doing? No, it's just fantastic to know that people can enjoy the game and 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 don't worry about uh, you know. Let, let if they have the structure, their club structure in place that can can take care of the administrative part of the game, can take part part of the uh, the oversight of the game and the coordination with the, the city and and that, and then then the coaches can then spend more time on the field and the players can spend more time on the field and and really enjoy uh, enjoy the the passion of the of the game, and that's what that's what it's at the end of the day. That's you know ha having fun on the pitch is what it's all about. So so re really that's what the the, the club structure really helps helps facilitate that for more players. So the last question for me is, what did you get out of it, and why did you do it? Uh, no, it's, it, I guess it's helped me help me as well in my in my professional professional sense as well. It you know gave me the opportunity to lead a diverse group of people and and the per opportunity to um, understand how you know uh, uh, group dynamics work and and. It, it helped me that way personally, and then um, just just the enjoyment of uh, and camaraderie that I, I, I got to have with uh, other coaches, other executive members. You know, we're really good friends still to this day, so we have, um, you know, a, gr a group that we stay in touch with regularly every in and out through the week. And so we're ne none of us are still involved in the club, but the, but the friendships live on, and, and that's what's important as well. Well, on behalf of the city of Port Coquitlam, on, uh, on behalf of soccer fans and, and uh, ex-players and coaches, thank you very much for all the work you've done, and congratulations on your award. Thank you. You're welcome. The committee again battled, and they could not come up with one recipient for this award. There are two. Our first co-recipient, Riverside Rapids Senior Girls Volleyball. Thanks. Okay.
We're here with the Riverside Senior Girls Volleyball Team, uh, 2021 Provincial Champions, and we just won Poco's Most Outstanding Team. Ava, how are you feeling tonight? I'm feeling pretty good. I think this, we definitely deserve to win this and get the recognition. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that we put a lot of work um, into the provincial championships this season and every single practice and tournament was worth it, all the dedication that we put into it. So it's nice to be rewarded with this. Yeah. That, how's everybody feeling about it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we, we worked really hard for this. It's a special group. Mm -hmm. Rapids on to one, two, Rapids! Um, I said we had two award recipients. Number two, you know it. Terry yeah! Fox Raven, senior girls basketball team. Make your way up here. My name is Karis, and this is Kiana, Taylor, Alicia, Emily, Hannah, Julia, Anna, and Lauren, and we're part of the Terry Fox Senior Girls Basketball. Emily, what did we do this year? Uh, we won the Most Outstanding Team Award, Karis. Along with Provincials. Yeah. Raven 